I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. We are standing right now on top of the very roof of the Last Supper, the room of the, or the upper room, the place that is believed to be the Last Supper. And behind me is one of the many Catholic churches here in Israel. And below this spot, two more floors down, is the site of King David's burial place. We heard today in the news here in Israel that Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, his office contacted the chief rabbi of the Haredi, the Hasidic Jews here, the head rabbi that is over the burial place of King David. And he was asked if he would be willing to give up this ground to the Vatican. Arut Shiva, Israel's national news, has been reporting not only has the Vatican trying to gain control of this spot, but they're also trying to gain control over all of Mount Zion. In fact, Zion's gate is the very gate that you come out of from the Armenian quarter here into the place of David's tomb. And just below here is what is called the City of David. It's the, the ruins that have been uncovered from the ancient biblical city where the Israelites once had the old city many years ago. 2,000 years ago, when the man named Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth walked the face of the earth here. It's ironic though that the government is actually asking the Hasidic Jews to give up the burial grounds, the right of King David's tomb, and allow also the Pope to have his seat here. Just makes you wonder what really is going on in the background. What are these negotiations really about? You know it seems like the peace talks have died. But then again, the Pope has definitely not canceled his trip here to Israel either. He's due here at the end of May, May 26th. In fact, we're looking to do a march here on the May 28th and even working on trying to organize a rally against the Pope and his visit here. A precious sister I talked to today, I won't mention her name, but it's very interesting the vision she shared with me. When she saw the Pope standing on a white platform in the sea, a beautiful sea in behind him, but his face was disfigured. It's interesting. The Antichrist will visit Israel very soon. And those of you that think that the peace process is over, well, it seems like to me as the Antichrist is the one that brings peace. Speaking of peace, we have gunfire right here in the background, right here on the Temple Mount, so no doubt Maybe we have more problems going on up there as well. Maybe it's unrest, as we're seeing quite a bit here lately, here in the old city, as the Palestinians are very nervous about what's about to happen. I know there's quite a bit of debate as well, even amongst the people that listen to the ministry that we do on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, regarding the building of the Third Temple. I do still stand by my own conviction that the Antichrist in the midst of the 70th week will come in to desecrate the temple. And yes, I do believe that we are the temple of God. But nonetheless, both in the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, written over in several places, but more in particularly in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel speaks about the temple being built, as well as John in Revelation 11. He tells how the temple will be built. We don't see any result that the temple will be destroyed, but we do see what Daniel says will happen during the midst of the week. But you got to remember, God comes and fights for his people, and even Yeshua will reign from Jerusalem. The house of God will be here during that time. Interesting things to think about. We know indeed who Mashiach is. We know that Yeshua is the Messiah. And eventually he's coming to fight for Israel. So those of you that believe in replacement theology, you might want to check your Bible again. God never replaced Israel. She's only been blinded for your sake. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, reporting you live from the top of the very Last Supper place here in Jerusalem. Baruch Hashem. Thank you.